So in addition to uh, the capstone workshop in the sustainability management program being a, an academic exercise, uh, it is also uh, a form of public service. We only undertake projects for governments and not-for-profit organizations. And so as you look at the agenda tonight, you will notice that we uh, have been working this semester for uh, cities, city governments, and for one very large national environmental organization. Another distinguishing characteristic of the capstones is that they take place um, around the world. So uh, we just heard a project uh, in Los Angeles. You're about to hear a project uh, here in New York. We will hear about a national uh, project later in the program and another one in Colombia. So we're very proud uh, of the fact that we can make sense of problems in different places around the world, that we can overcome uh, language barriers and cultural bar barriers in a single semester and help our clients. This next uh, project is um, about climate change and buildings in New York City. Professor Kizzy Charles Guzman was the faculty advisor and our presenter tonight is David Hugens. Please welcome him. Hello, and welcome to, I want to welcome you to the final briefing for the New York City uh, Coors Consultancy Capstone Project. But first, I'd like to thank our advisor, Kizzy. Without her, none of this would have happened, so thank you from all of us. So we've been hard at work developing solutions for the Coors program to ensure that it continues to contribute to the city's sustainability goals. Over the next 10 minutes, we will review the project context, describe the methodology that we developed, explain our findings, present our recommendations, and quantify the expected sustainability impacts of those recommendations. As you can see in this diagram, dense urban areas such as New York City experience the urban heat island effect. This means that in urban cores, it sees higher temperatures than lower density areas that have more vegetation and fewer dark surfaces like roads and buildings. So NYC Cool Roofs is a program of the New York City Department of Small Business Services that provides workforce training to low-income New Yorkers and coats city uh, rooftops with white reflective coating. This increases the albedo, or amount of solar reflectance of a rooftop, which in turn uh, reduces building uh, energy use and mitigates the urban heat island effect. Since its inception in 2009, Cool Roofs Initiative has coated over 6.7 million square feet of rooftop space, contributing to lower cooling costs for buildings and reducing an estimated 3,300 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent, which is the same as removing 697 passenger vehicles from the road in one year. By applying the white latex coating to rooftops, Cool Roofs provides a low-cost method to reduce the temperatures of urban neighborhoods during the hottest months of the year. This produces multiple benefits that are relevant to the city's sustainability goals. These include lowering the cooling needs of buildings, mitigating health risks for vulnerable populations, such as the elderly, reducing the city's greenhouse gas emissions, and providing job training for underemployed New Yorkers. Now, the city's 2014 greenhouse gas reduction plan, One City Built to Last, called for continuing the Cool Roofs program for the next 10 years. The program has also shifted its scope from a volunteer-driven energy efficiency program to one that's more focused on social impact and community health. However, the program has recently fallen short of its goal of coding 1 million square feet annually. The Department of Small Business Services reached out from our team to determine priority areas for coding rooftops in 2017 and 2018. Our main deliverables to the client is a prioritized list of codable rooftops that will allow NYC Cool Roofs to meet its goal of coding 1 million square feet per year for the next two years. We were also tasked with developing a strategic outreach plan that SBS can use to effectively recruit building owners to participate in Cool Roofs and communicate the benefits of the program to participants and city residents. 
So to craft a recommendation, the team first used the city's heat vulnerability index, or HVI, to identify the areas that have high service temperatures and would benefit the most from concentrated cool roofs implementation. So HVI is ranked by four specific characteristics. Poverty rate, percentage African American population, vegetation in albedo, and finally, local average temperature. So the team first used a set of spatial criteria based on existing cool roofs implement uh, installations as ranked by their square footage, as you can see on this map here. Narrowing the geographic focus to only zones with high heat vulnerability, we identified the spatial uh, extent of the impact area. Yeah. So this resulted in target zones within a quarter mile of existing cool roofs, including only buildings that are lower in height and larger in roof area, as our research suggests that this optimizes the impact of the program. The target zones established a data set of 50,000 buildings accounting for over 100 million square feet of roof space. For these buildings, we extracted data about the building owners from the city's tax records. So the team identified the largest 200 owners of roof space in these areas with 848 privately owned buildings and an additional 768 publicly owned buildings. We then researched and contacted the private owners to inquire if they would be interested in the program. Due to the time constraints on our research, the majority of private building owners will require additional follow-up to confirm their participation in the program. However, the outreach that we did do uh, eliminated a small percentage of owners who did not want to participate in the program, as well as confirming a similar percentage who were definitely interested. The team then Google mapped all the remaining buildings to perform a rough physical assessment using eligibility criteria provided by the client. We noted the roof color and eliminated, eliminated any roofs that wouldn't be suitable for the program. Buildings were prioritized by the color and size of the roof as shown in this graphic and our final recommendations only included high and medium priority roofs. So this provided an effective way to take the initial square feet of 23 million, which was definitely an unrealistic outreach target for the client, down to a final result of 2.7 million, which was an impactful but achievable target for the next two years. The target included 40% public buildings, 38% private nonprofit sector buildings, and 22% for-profit sector buildings. So here's an illustration of what our process looks like on a neighborhood scale map of the Mount Eden area of the Bronx. First, we start with buildings within the target zone. We then eliminate all the buildings over six stories, eliminate all the rooftops that are under 10,000 square feet, and then eliminate the high albedo rooftops or rooftops with already high reflectance like white rooftops. So this gives us all of our potential cool roofs identified within the area. So you might be thinking that this surely isn't enough rooftops. However, a small team implements this program. So this is a bold yet achievable goal for the client. And as the project continues, the methodology that we've developed uh, can be used again and again to continue the spread of cool roofs installations throughout the lifetime of the project, which is the next 10 years. So following the research and outreach done by our team, we crafted two listings of priority buildings and owner relationships uh, for SBS to pursue over the next two years as, as identified on this map. I know it's a little dim, so bear with us. So these recommendations are concentrated in neighborhoods such as Central Harlem in Manhattan, Bed-Stuy, Crown Heights, and Brownsville in Brooklyn, Mount Eden, Concourse Village, and Mott Haven in the Bronx, just to name a few. Beyond the targeted outreach to the building, to the building owners in high HVI zones, there are other steps that SBS can take to promote cool roofs more broadly. Our team has developed a three-pillar outreach strategy, and the first of these is educating stakeholders. Educating city residents, building owners, and community organizations about the benefits of cool roofs can help generate awareness and participation in the program. We've created tools such as a greenhouse gas calculator and a financial model to facilitate these educational discussions. For example, the building GHG calculator that our team produced shows that for every year, an average 8,000 square foot rooftop, uh, it can save around $800 on their electricity bill and one metric ton of GHG emissions will be avoided. That's every year. This is a small but really impactful piece of information that can really help facilitate the discussions with these stakeholders. 
The second pillar of our outreach strategy is developing new partnerships and working to leverage existing ones. So Cool Roof should really strive to create strategic partnerships that enable the program to expand its reach and its name recognition. For example, partnering with Con Ed to include flyers with existing utility bills, or with working with major philanthropic organizations like New York Cares to connect directly with private companies. And the last pillar of a recommended strategy is to implement a marketing campaign. This includes a, implementing a strong, active social media presence, integrating with developer messaging platforms like real estate magazines, and encouraging word of mouth through incentive, bon through incentive programs and referral bonuses. By helping the city meet its stated goal of 1 million square feet per year through 2018, our recommendations will benefit the most heat vulnerable areas of New York. The energy savings produced by our team uh, for these recommended coatings will generate tens of thousands of dollars in savings for nonprofit and social service organizations, as well as low income housing providers. So this is also allowing SBS to continue its mission of training at least 50 underemployed New Yorkers with new green job skills every year. And so our two-year recommendations will definitely help the client provide multiple sustainability benefits to some of New York's most underserved communities. At the same time, our project has produced results that the client will continue to benefit from in 2019 and beyond. Our data-driven partner identification method our financial benefit model, our GHG building calculator, and our outreach materials are all tools that the city can continue to use as long as the Cool Roofs program exists. We're really proud of the work that we've done this semester, and we're definitely sure that this will leave a lasting legacy of enduring value with our client. Thank you. Hi. Um, I was curious about the decision to only look at the parts of the city that were the highest on the scale of HVI and mm -hmm. whether or not that was client driven um, or a decision that the team made and, and why since it's a six point, you know, a, a six point scale. Mm -hmm. So the, the focus on only the high HVI zones show the areas that we can actually have the most impact. So by focusing just on these areas, it really is grabbing the low-hanging fruit. However, the methodology that we're developing allows for a continuation of that HVI to be revamped over time. And so as those HVI scores actually go, go down, then we're able to reapply this methodology, or Cool Roofs is able to reapply this methodology to then spread this. So definitely our focus in those HVI zones that are ranked five were something that allowed us to really concentrate our efforts because concentration of cool roofs really has shown to be more effective than the wide dispersal that had previously been done. Other questions? Uh, it seems like outreach is one of the major obstacles in, to uh, people with roofs as one of the major obstacles to what you encountered during this project. Um, how did you go about uh, contacting all the building owners and what plans would you recommend for follow-up? So I'm really glad you asked that because we did spend actually quite a bit of team time doing this. So after taking all of that information from the city's tax records through our GIS model, we then actually used services like Zola and LavaMap, which are publicly available tax tools to identify the owners of each of these buildings. We then through the magic of Google, we're able to find their contact information. We, each member of the team develop, helped to develop a script that we then reached out individually to each, I believe it was at the end of our focus, 175 individual building owners in the private sector, and we called them and tried to have these conversations. Unfortunately, not everyone likes being cold called, but we were able to really generate some significant interest. And even if people s didn't say that they were absolutely interested and wanted a cool roof on their building, they did want more information. So that's really promising to us. And we are providing both the script as well as our methodology for getting those numbers and getting those contacts to the city. And the people who we've already contacted, Th those contacts and that information that we were able to get from them will be part of our deliverables as well. Time for one final question. Okay, thank you very much, David.